Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with another airbrush review. And as always, I'm buying airbrushes off eBay, Amazon, uh, Taobao, a lot of those websites, and trying out uh, each of the affordable models to see what's suitable for the model and how it hands up with my experience with uh, uh, commercial brands, well-known brands, or designer brands. It's sort of thing that if you're buying a handbag uh, to do your grocery shoppings, do you need a Versace or do you just need a canvas bag that's going to carry uh, the fucking groceries? And it's the same with uh, tools. If it does the job, it does the job. Now, this is an aluminium model that I found on eBay. It uh, falls a very similar shape to some of the Iwata stuff, though it has uh, similar threads to your Hisings. So, um, the manufacturer is not uh, listed. Uh, this is your basic instructions. Um, it's a model 130. All your normal specs are uh, 0.3mm nozzle. It takes the same uh, parts doesn't give you a breakdown and it gives you just very basic maintenance and instructions. Uh, it is a smaller airbrush to everything else and uh, you've got this uh, flimsy little case and a box that is far smaller than your high sing boxes. So we'll uh, pull this guy apart but um, initially when receiving it I was uh, very very impressed and uh, very very keen to play with it. So pulling it down to all of its components uh, I'm not going to remove uh, that bit. We've got our nozzle. Uh, the air comes through. The reservoir is removable. It is insanely light, being all uh, aluminium. Uh, meaning you'll have to take a little uh, care of it as it can um, break easily. That's surprisingly aluminium as well. Heavy duty uh, O-ring, not necessarily um, required. I've got a steel uh, needle. Nozzle comes out of a small brass bit, so uh, the guts of that is at least uh, brass. And I could see uh, right down the guts in there. So if these are uh, top bit comes out that would not be a big deal probably make it easier for uh, cleaning the airline but I would not recommend it I could see it all the way down there so um, and you could see the uh, brass bit on the other side in the tiny uh, paint well so you've got a small uh, round paint well it's flat at the bottom um, you've got a brass pipe it's uh, very very thin I could see clogging to be an issue, but if you clean it out regularly, that shouldn't be uh, too bad. Well, I'll take out uh, the guts and have a look at that. Uh, the trigger is an oval shape. It feels uh, very, very nice on the figure. It's, uh, this is quite beautiful to uh, handle. I'm very interested to see how the spraying process goes. Uh, that is a short thread, so paint whatnot could come through. This is all in one part, so this is the tongue is very easy to insert. And uh, the air plug is in one piece with the trigger. So that is everything in one piece. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, lubricate the threads and uh, the internals with uh, a bit of petroleum jelly to make sure that if any paint um, goes uh, past the uh, backing o-ring. Now the um, bolt or the bolt um, that shows all the way to the paint reservoir is massive with a huge uh, flathead screwdriver um, indent. That would be super easy to remove opposed to um, every other airbrush. So that is a massive improvement. Um, all of it is very standard, I don't mind. The only thing I do not like is the paint reservoir there is tiny. Uh, the brass pipe is tiny. Uh, once you have a build-up of lint, that is going to be a bit tricky to clean out. Though, um, I suppose if you ram your um, cleaning brush in the reverse end and push it out, uh, that shouldn't be too bad. Or you push it deep into the airbrush and clean out the rear end. So, 
uh, nothing too uh, difficult. Though if we try to uh, open this bit uh, very quickly, um, I've shown this in a few, but uh, just in case this is the first time you're uh, watching a video, I just like to rub a little uh, petroleum jelly on all of the threads. Now, this um, airbrush crown is unique to this model, so that's something you don't want to lose. Everything else is uh, very standard. You can um, apply heising parts to the rest of it. I like to grease up the um, rear thread and put one all the way down to guts to near the seal of uh, the reservoir. And in the event you pull your um, needle out or your needle is a bit dodgy or the seal fails, when paint seeps backwards into the air solenoid, it mixes with the uh, jelly and uh, it does not tighten any of the joints because when metal works on metal, um, there's a lot of friction, it uh, is not very, very smooth. Once you get even the tiniest, tiniest molecule of paint in there, it just glues and seizes everything. If it's all lubricated, uh, metal operates on metal quite beautifully. Uh, another thing uh, that I also highly recommend is um, pulling apart and putting your airbrush uh, together multiple times. If you buy a new airbrush to get a feel for its parts breakdown, its parts, its assembly, it's a bit like uh, operating a gun uh, when you do a field strip and all that. Uh, so you've got an idea to fault find when something goes wrong. And I'm making a bit of a, a for myself, greasing the um, thread down. And the beautiful thing about this uh, tongue bit is it just slides in and it sits like that. So there's uh, no balancing. And you screw the thread in. Grease up this a bit. And uh, if there's a bit too much grease on it, uh, generally it gets a bit stuck, air won't go through. All you have to do is work it. If you work it and the air still doesn't get through, just pull it apart and remove some of the grease. So, to pull that back and align her in. I'll do this off camera as that takes a while. Now, don't forget with the nozzle, uh, this one's got a very, very tiny thread, we uh, get the spanner and you only tighten it with one finger very very lightly not to snap it off. Now being a bit rough of it can scratch uh, the coating off it, it um, looks like uh, some sort of uh, electroplating or enameling work so if you want it to look pretty, um, just take a bit of care of it, but that will eventually wear off, scratch up, and um, be not as pretty later. Sometimes putting uh, the end on and adjusting the knob, for those who adjust the knob, uh, it gets caught on the back of the needle, and uh, that just uh, irritates me on all models of airbrushes. Having a hole all the way through, I find that to be quite genius. So having a bit of a play with it, Mechanically, it feels very, very tight. It flows beautifully. All the connections are really uh, tight and just adapts well. It uh, feels like a nicer airbrush than any of the highest things. Stupidly weight in the hands. It's probably about the fifth of a weight of uh, any other airbrush and it's a tad smaller. Uh, because it's a tad smaller, my hand is probably ever so slightly big in it, but it's uh, very, very uh, comfortable. Um, there is not a lot of force on the trigger, so people who find uh, the larger airbrushes, uh, when you're airbrushing, you hurt your hands, it's heavy, or you get figure, um, finger fatigue, you've got a smaller hand, or you're a smaller individual, this might be ideal for you. Run some paint through it and see what happens. 
Okay, dealing with the noisy compressor right next to the screen, I've got a bit of pre-mixed paint mixed in. We're using the O3 um, small compressor. I'll uh, just put the cap back on the airbrush. Uh, the and let's see how we go. Dull down the air a bit. And we'll try with more pressure. So, realistically, it sprays pretty tight. It performs uh, very, very similar in spray pattern to your Spar Maxes and Hisings and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there is initially a bit of uh, fuzz, but that's probably because uh, the needle uh, needs to be slightly straightened or uh, polished ever so slightly. So, a tatter tuning can go a long way. But uh, straight out of the box, um, it's not too bad. And if you were colouring in an object, that's not a problem whatsoever. And if you're to do some very delicate camouflage work, that looks kind of uh, soft edge. That will uh, require a bit of work. Gradient work is not a problem. So realistically, it's not too bad at all. I do not mind this airbrush at all. It's um, a lot nicer to handle. Uh, we'll do a quick clean out and a final uh, review of it, but... Um, I'm uh, definitely liking it. At this point, I'm prepared to trade in a Hi-Sing to um, own one of these. Now, I found it as like my other um, AirTech aluminium airbrush. The paint does not stick to the material well at all, atomizes beautifully and wipes and cleans up a lot quicker than an electro-plated uh, brass or steel airbrush. So overall, uh, very impressed. You can find these on eBay. Uh, they're also sold through the Salt Mine Hobby Shop in Australia. Very worthwhile uh, jumping on, really enjoyed it. It's uh, something that I'm going to be using a lot more, uh, much like that 0.5 um, O3 uh, airbrush. And uh, just really enjoying getting other airbrushes, uh, testing them out, comparing and uh, opening up my um, horizons. I'm hoping in the future to get my hands on each of the name brand ones, such as uh, Iwata, Stenner and Hardbeck, and uh, Pache. Uh, put those through the ringer and uh, just announced to uh, is a name branded airbrush uh, 
superior over the name non-name brand stuff or are they equal or what's better and uh, what's not finally put this uh, debate to sleep all in all great model I uh, highly recommend it thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content uh, have a look on Facebook I uh, got work in progresses resources all the videos go up there all the finished models all the work in progresses we try to put um, one to two videos a week on the channel and uh, a few other sources and interesting things in each description video of each video. If you have any questions, I uh, look at the comment section every day. Anything phased as a question is always answered and uh, researched. Catch you guys next time and thank you for watching.